Today's video, I'm going to turn this old pair of Goodyear welted, made in England, Kilgore French Stanberry Quarter Brogue Oxfords into this. And then I'm also going to talk about who this company is that I'd never heard of before and try to determine who's the maker, the actual manufacturer of these shoes. All right, let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. Old pair of Allen Edmonds torn apart. Look at that gloss. And here they are finished up. Okay, so what I'm talking about today is uh, this pair of uh, uh, quarter brogue. See the holes there? So that's called broguing. So this makes it a quarter brogue because there's no broguing anywhere else on it. Capto Oxfords. Um, this is a brand that I've never heard of before. And if you can see it in there, it's Kilgore French Stanbury. So I'll talk about that brand, that label. I've kind of researched it a little bit, the company uh, and who they are. And I had my eyes on these, not because of the brand. I'd never heard of the brand before ever. But when I saw these shoes, I saw a couple things. Number one, you can see they are Goodyear welted. And these are, looks like 270 degree, 270 degree Goodyear welted. You can see the stitch density is very dense compared to uh, more like, look at the stitch density on an Allen Edmonds made in the 2000s, okay? So that's an indication of high quality. Generally, you see the shoes made in English. The English don't mess around with their shoes. They're pretty serious about their shoes. You can see the quarter rubber leather heel, straight cut there with the little nails, big nails, little nails. And there's also one in the center. Um, if you've watched my Which Polo Ralph Lauren Shoes, Which Polo Shoes Are Best video, I'll put a link in the description below. There's going to be a lot of similarities between that video and this video because what I found out was this brand doesn't make shoes, okay? By the way, I'm trying to hurry up and do this video. I'm hoping my kids stay quiet. I'm trying to finish this portion of this video while my wife's not home because she doesn't really know I bought these. Um, and so here's the thing. Um, I couldn't really justify buying these things because, well, uh, if you've seen my other um, Alan Edmonds, dating Alan Edmonds video, I, got, I already have this pair of nice uh, quarter brogue capto oxfords and you know kind of a medium to dark brown i guess that's a i guess that's a brown uh medium brown i guess or is it a dark brown medium to dark brown i have a pair of allen edmonds uh, um you know capto oxfords here in black um i also have this pair of dark brown uh johnson and murphy capto oxfords although these are corrected grain leather and i'm considering either keeping them just as winter only shoes or getting rid of them um, then I also have this pair of, I guess this is Cordovan, uh, Quarter Brogue Cap Toe Oxfords. Uh, but these are, you know, they've got a half sole on them. The soles have a little wear. These are a little too tight on me. So I'm also thinking about getting rid of these. Uh, I almost forgot. I also have this pair of uh, Johnston & Murphy Aristocrafts Medallion Cap Toe Oxford, uh, kind of in a light brown. Uh, first of all, why do I like them? Because of the bench made, made in England. I don't have any made in England shoes, you know. But I think I'm going to try changing the color on these to ox blood using this, okay? Mahogany, uh, I guess mahogany, not ox blood, changing the color with Phoebings. And I'm going to experiment a little bit. So the little few second clip you saw there in the beginning was the uh, after result. But here's the thing right now that I'm shooting this, I don't know what the result's going to be, okay? So uh, I'm doing this under the assumption that the result is going to come out good. But at the moment I'm shooting this, I really have no idea what the result is. I might be about to ruin this pair of shoes. Um, but if I do, not a gigantic loss. Um, that's actually not what I paid for them. And what I actually paid for them was um, paid, as you can see there, 20, to, 20 bucks plus tax for them. I think the hole in my wardrobe that these are going to fill is I really only have one nice pair of, uh, if you call it burgundy or cordovan color, you know, that burgundy color. Um, I really only have one nice pair of Oxfords in that color, which is my Allen Edmonds McAllister's. So I think that's what I want to do is turn these into um, an ox blood, uh, you know, or cordovan color and shine them up real nice. The first step is going to be the uh, uh, kind of one of the normal things that I usually do with the shoes like this that I get. A uh, little alcohol, spraying alcohol water inside of them just to, you know, disinfect. Um, generally, I think people sometimes are afraid of that, but usually these old shoes for bacteria to grow you need moist and damp and they're always like bone dry so I've never had a problem with you know shoes stinking or anything like that but so alcohol on this insides um, and then on the outside um, these particular shoes look like they don't have much polish or anything on them 
Um, but I think with this pair, what I'm going to do is first, I would usually use Renomat first to strip off any wax, then saddle soap them, because saddle soap has not just cleaners but nourishments in it to get in the leather. In this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to saddle soap them first, then I think I'm going to use the Reno mat um, because then I'm going to strip these with acetone. Okay, I want everything off of the surface of these shoes. Um, so I'm going to use the saddle soap just to clean and like clean the dirt down in the welt and stuff like that. Um, then I'm going to re dye them. Um, then I'll do the polish routine on them and I'll try and keep you guys in the loop here. All right, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so first of all, who is a Kilgore French and Stanberry? Well, if you go look them up currently, they're currently the company name is Kilgore, K I L G O U R, and their website, Kilgore.com. I'm going to read from you just a little bit of uh, um, exactly from their website. Um, Kilgore design is the watchword at Kilgore. As a Savile Row house with all the heritage this implies, skill and craftsmanship uh, and quality are a given. Um, now, from what I read about them, they did not produce their own. They did not produce their own shoes. That's why these say, um, if you look inside of them, I don't know if you can see there, uh, but what it does say is bench made in England, especially for Kilgore French and Stanbury. You know, for example, like if you get a pair of Brooks Brothers shoes, um, you know, you'll see, like for example, they have one model that looks just like an Allen Edmonds strand, and guess what? It is a strand with a different heel on it. Okay, so that's very common. If you watch my polo. Uh, Ralph Lauren, which polo shoes are best? Polo doesn't make their own shoes either. They've had Crockett and Jones, you know, a lot of different, uh, Edward Green, different makers, um, um, something uh, Mantozzi. But anyway, Italian makers make shoes for them. They don't make their own shoes. That's very common. So if you look at Kilgore today on their current website, the kind of stuff, just to let you know, um, their sport coats are like $1,300 just for a sport coat, okay? Uh, Saville Row. It's a Saville Row house. What does that mean? I'd heard of that. Couldn't tell you before, you know, today what that actually meant. But if you look that up, Saville Row is a street in England that was built in like 1735. And it's in the center of England. As you know, England and Paris, France are like the centers of the fashion industry. An Oxford style shoe, closed lacing system Oxford, is named after Oxford, a, a city in England. Uh, so Savile Row is this street, it's like the center of the best uh, tailoring, clothes, shoemaking, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, in England. Um, so they're very prestigious. The company was founded in 1880 as TNF French. Uh, business merged with A.H. Kilgore in 1923 to form Kilgore and French. Now here's a key. 1925, Fred and Louis Stanberry joined uh, and introduced an elegance. Da, da, da. So in 1937, the business name changed to Kilgore, French, and Stanberry. So that was 1937. Uh, the brand became Kilgore in 2003. So this name only existed from 1937 to 2003. So that means these shoes are at bare minimum because it's two th late 2018. At a bare minimum, these are 15 years old, okay? So I thought that was kind of interesting. So that's a high-end shoe. Um, and as I said, I had no idea who this brand was before I got it. But without knowing the brand, you know, those features, uh, I knew this was an expensive uh, not cheaply made. You know, I knew this was an expensive shoe from a good shoe manufacturer. Max shoe manufacturer. So, now what I'm going to show you next is not proof. Um, in other words, it would not hold up in court. Okay. So this is from Style Forum. This is a post from Style Forum. They've got some people on there that are like blow my mind as far as how much they know about this stuff. Um, so this is from a post that was literally 250 pages long, not 250 posts, 250 pages of posts. Okay, so I got through about 50 pages of it, and I think my eyes started to, you know, like, you know, fall out of my head. Um, but this guy appears to be very knowledgeable. I blacked out his avatar and his uh, name. Um, you could find, probably find it if you want. But basically, he sold a couple pairs of these shoes. He really seems like he knows what he's talking about. And again, that doesn't mean he's right. He could be very wrong. But I'm going by my gut instinct saying this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, so what's very clear, this thread basically was about who makes different maker shoes, okay? Like Kilgore French and Stanbury came up five, six, seven times that I saw. Um, basically what they're going by is a style of construction, the style of the stamp. Like for example here, if you see the model number inside the shoe, okay? The way that's stamped, you know, that's not handwritten. You know, some of the shoes it's handwritten, the way it's handwritten, the way it's stamped. Um, it, it, it's all evidence-based, the style of nailing. So those kinds of things, based on that, they're able to conclude, you know, sometimes with really strong um, conviction, sometimes, you know, uh, without strong conviction, who made what 
uh, shoes. But basically, long story short, this guy says that Crockett and Jones, Crockett and Jones shoes are way up there. Um, I'm just going by memory. I think probably six, seven hundred, probably six hundred bucks range is their cheapest shoe. Uh, but Crockett and Jones is one of the best known shoemakers uh, in England. Um, so here's some evidence, though, based on what he shows. See, he says with uh, you know pretty reasonable uh, certainty his or Crockett and Jones. You see that label on the inside, even the way the uh, um, that label is crooked you know, is just like mine, and that must be intentional, okay, so that you know it's handmade, or, you know, hand-applied or whatever, but bench made in England, especially for Kilgore, French, and Stanbury, Stanbury just like his, um, and then you can also see here the way that model number, and even, um, even the first digit 323, my guess is that's the last, the form on which the shoe is made, um, I'll get to that in a minute, um, the toe shape, if you can see here, right, look at the way that toe shape is, um, it's not real pointed, you know, and if you look at the toe shape from the top, the way it's kind of almond shaped, um, right? If I can try and hold the shoe at a similar angle, this is not easy to do. You know, and if you see from the side, the way that toe shape looks from the side, try and compare, right? Very corroborative. Um, and then also the way the heel is done. So the way the heel is done. Now that stamp is very unusual made in england and it looks like the little it's not a you know whiskers but propeller or whatever that little symbol between the little nails on the outside the one large nail in the center um you know that angle cut and if you look at my shoes here it looks like it's got to have been made by the same maker to me okay mine also has the one nail in the center it has two in the rubber which i don't see on their photograph so more than likely whoever made those made these he says crockett and jones so I think I have a decent shot that these are actually a Crockett and Jones shoe. That's pretty cool, right? Um, so let's get started here with the cleanup. First thing I'm going to do, uh, I don't need to show it on camera. I'm going to remove the laces, um, then I'm going to cut back in. Now, I've got an entire another video on saddle soap and everything you want to know about it. I'll link it below. But this is just a Kiwi saddle soap, and uh, this is just uh, the lid with hot water in it and a brush uh, specifically just for this only. So. Um, I'm going to get a decent lather on here. Okay, that might be a little bit too much soap. And just going to start scrubbing. Saddle soap cleans the leather and conditions it. You want this to lather up. You can scrub really hard with it. You know, as hard as the brush will allow. And by the way, if you noticed, I do have my favorite Alaru. Uh, o L L I E R O O, my favorite uh, brand of shoe trees. In them here, I get these shoe trees for about twenty one, twenty two bucks off either Amazon or uh, eBay. Interesting, isn't it? You can tell it uh, a little water got in them, but uh, you know I should say water. You know it did let some of the water go in, but there's a difference. This is clean in that one isn't I'll do the other one off camera okay now I've got both shoes washed off with the saddle soap here you know there's some people debate a little bit about oh you know should do this first that first okay you know we're not solving any world problems here I was using a brush to get the soap out of the brogues and you know some of those areas um, I'm gonna skip the rental mat because there's feels like to me there's really no wax there's not much left on these shoes um anyway the acetone is going to strip that off anyway so i'm going to go right to the acetone and i'm going to take us out to the garage here to do that for this part what i've got is i got my rubber gloves on um i've got acetone here okay um acetone is pretty strong stuff uh it's different this is different than like denatured alcohol 
Um, it's going to take off uh, the color from the shoes as well. I'm not sure how much. I've messed with it a little bit, but I have not done this to this scale. A um, couple other times I've messed with removing the finish from a shoe um, is you'll see one of my videos, um, Bostonians putting a burn burnished patina on my old Bostonian loafers. I'll link it below. Uh, there's one other one I um, did that too when I was uh, kind of fixing a pair of shoes. So I've got this. Um, I've got an old, this is an old piece of t-shirt that I use as a rag just for stuff like this, okay? So I want a rag that a, a nice decent quality cloth, one that I can uh, throw away. So again, uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. I have not really done this before. Um, and I'm also in the garage and it's a nice warm, it's unusually warm for December here. It's like 60 degrees. So I got the windows, drop garage door open and I'm just going to get a decent amount of a rag. And like I said, I might be about to ruin a pair of shoes, but... Uh, we're about to find out. I'm gonna. Um, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna start. Maybe start on the tongue. See what it does. And this may not remove anything. And I'm keeping my head back away because the smell is pretty bad. Like I said, I got the window open, the garage door open. You know, so I'm trying to keep away from the fumes. The dust mask is not going to keep these fumes out. So there's really no point in wearing a dust mask. I don't know that it's actually taking anything off. Now, there's a couple reasons I'm doing this. Number one, if you're going to dye the shoes, you really want to get waxes off. So that's the main thing I want to remove is any waxes. If all the waxes are off, this will work. This is full grain leather. If you don't know what that means, that's the best kind of leather. And it means there's nothing on top of the leather. You know, um, what you're seeing is the actual surface of the leather. So... As long as there's no wax, the dye will work. But what I was actually hoping was that some of the color would come off. Now, when you when they dye leather, if it's aniline dyed leather, the leather, it's not a coating on top of it. It goes into it. So I guess that's why, if you really see, there's not much color change on this rag. So I don't think any of the color is going to come out. So hopefully this is going to be enough, like I said, to make sure there is no wax on the shoe. That's what I really want. And I think everything is off the surface of them. Okay, so I tested a little area. First, what I did was I uh, masked off where I didn't want to get anything on the inside of the shoe here. I took the shoe trees out and I just hit the very edge of the side of the tongue. The color looks very dark, almost a black, uh, but there's not that much light out here. Um, I'm pretty confident that this color is going to come out nice, um, but it's really very flat because there's no shine on it. Um, I guess I'm kind of past the point of no return now. I was debating on airbrushing it or swabbing it, but I'm going to think I'm going to go ahead and swab it on here. Um, and probably what I should also do um, is I should probably, I'm not sure if it's necessary, but I'll probably also mask off the welt here. Okay, so here it goes. And this little sponge holds a lot. I'm really nervous right now, but here it goes. From what I've seen, um, the way this dye works, you would think the more of it you put on, the darker it gets. I have found that to not really be true. Um, I mean, obviously there's like, you know, you can see there where, you know, it didn't take, but from what I've seen, um, like what I would expect is if I missed a point, like the points I'm overlapping because I'm using a brush, okay, and not, uh, um, you know, not a spray gun, like when you're painting a car. What I expected was the areas that I brushed twice, in other words, the overlap areas would be darker. My experience is it really doesn't do that. It seems like the color really comes from 
This may sound, I don't know, it's hard to articulate. The color comes from the dye, not the multiple coats of the dye. So you can kind of overdo it in some areas and it'll pretty much still all be the same color. I hope that kind of makes sense. You don't, you don't, you don't want to take this lightly because this stuff is very permanent. Okay, it's going to soak into the leather. It's not going to come back out. Um, and also, I read some stuff by thievings that it can harden the leather. Like the dye itself can have effect, um, you know, on the leather quality. So that's why I'm doing this on a pair of $20 shoes and not my, you know, uh, you know, $245 Allen Edmonds, okay? I guess I'm kind of doing two coats, I guess you could say. Wow, look at that, huh? No going back now. And I might have to do something to get into the tips of the, the brogue there. That's something I hadn't thought about in advance. That dry and I'll be back okay and here they are dyed uh, the dye has had a few hours to dry and I am uh, I'm really pleased I'm I don't want to say stunned but wow um, if I didn't know what color these were before I'd have never believed uh, that I actually changed colors and I think they look amazing so I'm going to nourish them now with some um, uh, with some uh, leather, leather lotion and then with the sapphire which also nourishes the leather uh, and uh, I'll keep showing you the progress polish it's got wax in it cream um, color and this color actually is uh, mahogany number nine and sapphire by most people in the shoe industry is regarded to be the best
think I normally wouldn't want you guys to see this, but uh, you see, I am uh, I'm sweating. So um, I guess I just want you to know, there's a little bit of effort in this. completely finished up. I'm very pleased. I'm happy with the color. Uh, I like the tone. It is definitely a reddish hint to it. You can see that it's not brown. And the toe caps look great. The edges of the heels look really good as well. I'm happy with that. If I can get it to focus, there we go. You can see it's got that little a little bit of wheeling around the edge of the heels too. You can see the stacked leather construction of the heels. Here's the other one. Okay. Um, I did clean up the soles just a little bit, basically just in this middle portion where there's no wear. I did put a little polish on those too. All right. Remove the sticker. So there we go. They're all done. Uh, one thing I just did is I went to thehangerproject.com, Kirby Allison's website. He has a great YouTube channel. I ordered new laces. Number one, these are brown. Um, I don't think they match anymore, so I ordered black. Number two, they're actually a little bit frayed, and they could be slightly longer. Uh, these are not waxed, number three, so I don't. they may not even be the original laces. Uh, but I ordered a very narrow flat laces, you know, versus these being round. And I got a little bit longer uh, and I got them black. So I uh, can't wait to get those in. I'll probably update you by putting a, a link to my Instagram um, when those do come in. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you guys have an awesome day. God bless.